Welcome. So now that you've installed MU8086, we're going to actually create a Hello World program, as you always do when you use a new language. So what I want you to do, I want you to press New by here. And we'll just go with the COM template and just press OK. Now you'll see this, and this is a bit confusing, right, for a beginner. Um, <clears throat> essentially, uh, this emulator is kind of running like its own version of MS-DOS and it will load the program we write here into memory address uh, 100 hex uh, and then um, it'll start executing from there so when we do org 100h what we're basically saying here is that um, the program we're writing now will be loaded into this address and then when we assemble it it helps um, make sure that we offset correctly um, and that's why we have to do this by doing org 100h we're telling the assembler what we're, we're always going to be loaded into this address and because we're going to be loaded into this address uh, it should um, make sure that everything's offset to that address so that's what that does it isn't actually an assembly instruction it just tells the assembler that we're going to offset from there this little ret by here means we're returning from a subroutine. Now, essentially, we can get more on this later, but I'll just explain it a little bit. Um, the MS-DOS calls us when it loads us, and then by doing ret, we return control to MS-DOS. But I'll explain a lot more about how this works later on because it's a bit confusing to understand, right, for a beginner. So what we're going to do then, we're just going to first output a character to the screen, just one character. So I'll show how to do that. I want you to go, and this is going to be really confusing. You won't get it at all, but just follow what I'm doing because you've got to start somewhere. Just do move, M-O-V, A-H, comma, zero E-H. Now press enter, and then I want you to do move, A-L, A, and then finally do integer, uh, I mean int 10h. So if we just press emulate at the top here now and you run that and just press run and you'll see that a is outputted to the screen. So if you was to type hello world here, it w nothing would happen. It would fail. It, w it would not work. So just don't try it and I'll explain why in a minute. Now this MOV means we're moving some data to some memory or to some um, register of some kind. Now I'm just going to briefly explain this because it will be explained much more in depth as we go along. Registers are essentially uh, storage units in the processor itself and they can store like a certain amount of data. For example, AH can store one byte and AL can store one byte. However, you can reference them both together using AX, but more will be explained about that later on. So in the processor, we have an AH register here and an AL register here, and they're, they're basically just uh, one byte memory units in the processor itself. This is not RAM, this is, um, this is in the processor itself. So what we do is we move um, 0x0e into AH, so hexadecimal 0e into AH, and then we move the character A into AL. And remember this. Remember when, when you when you do when you do a quote like this, quote A quote, it gets converted to the binary or binary equivalent, right? So it's the same as say in decimal 65 and whatever. Um, whatever the binary equivalent is of decimal 65. So, now for, in, now for INT. INT means interrupt. And again, here we do 10H, so hopefully you've caught on by now that the H at the end of here means that uh, we're, we're using hexadecimal. So 0EH is a 0X0E, you know, hexadecimal 0E. Now, INT 10H is basically saying let's call interrupt 10H and 
10H is basically responsible for outputting to the screen. Now, how this works is, we'll explain much more about this later on because there's so much to explain. That's why it's taken me so long to even get through a hello world. But don't worry, you just need to follow this through and you'll understand. Now, when we go uh, int 10H, we're saying call interrupt 10H. Now, you register the interrupts in, in memory, but we'll get onto that later on. 10H is a BIOS routine. So you know your, your BIOS, right? You probably don't know much about it, right? Because it does a lot more than you realize. The BIOS has its own kernel that can only be used um, when you're in something known as real mode, which is a compatibility mode. It basically, when you, when you're, when you first boot your computer, your computer is in a compatibility mode until, until, until there's some code that tells it to go, go, go to the mod, go to the modern uh, architecture. So whilst you're in this compatibility mode, you can do, um, you can run old code, like 16 bit code for the old Intel processors from the 1980s. Where, and that's exactly what we're doing here. This is what MU8086 is, it's an old processor, right? So in the BIOS's kernel, interrupt 10H is responsible for outputting to the screen. So when we go and do interrupt 10H, it goes and calls that BIOS routine. And then the BIOS will actually deal with the hardware of getting this on the screen here. And uh, it basically just uh, puts it into video memory. But more on that later, because uh, I, this is quite a mouthful for a hello world, right? I mean, there is a lot to learn, so I don't expect you to understand all of this straight away. It'll take us a while to go through it all. Anyway, that's how you print out A to the screen. Okay, so now let's make a program that outputs hello world, okay? So what we're going to do to do that then, I want you to go up here at the very top here. I want you to do main colon. And we're just going to tab all this just to make it clear. So main is a label. This is how you create labels in assembly. Uh, you basically have the label name and then a colon. And you can reference labels all throughout your program. Essentially, in assembly, everything runs down uh, like even if I put some data here it would start executing that data it, like the processor runs down downwards right if you write it like this without using sections and so on that, that that's how it, it works so what we need to do then here we create main here which which we're gonna use and at the very top here I just want you to say um, message colon db hello world explanation mark quote and I want you to do um, comma zero for the null terminator right to end the string now if you run this this isn't gonna work very well now let me explain why if you press emulate here and you try to run that you can see unknown ops code skipped decimal 65. Now decimal 65 is the ASCII equivalent of the H character. No, I think the A character actually. No, the E. It's one of them. Anyway, the important thing to know is the, the emulator has tried to run this data, which is a problem. So this is what I mean by that it runs downwards. It's gone in here. It's MS-DOS has loaded our program. It start executing at 100 H and it's tried to run our message label as actual code. Now, this isn't a variable. Do not make that mistake. When I was first learning assembly, I thought this was a variable, like writing like this was a variable. It's not the case. This is no different than our main label by here. The only thing you need to be focused on is DB. DB here means data byte, and it allows us to specify uh, like it allows us to specify a number of characters right so we can say hello world here and that'll literally be put in memory as hello world right at 100 h when it's loaded in so how do we get around this then how do we stop it from running our little message here well you use something called a jump 
you just do jump main and if you just press that now you can see it works as usual again because what we do is we jump over message here because we jump to the main label okay so enough of that now we can carry on and make our print routine so down here just do print okay and up here we're gonna go print underscore char okay good so by here then in our print I want you to move um, SI message and SI is just another register by the way but more will be explained on this later I'm just trying to give you a taste of how it works uh, then I want you to go move AH 0EH all right cool now what I want you to do is is I want you to say lod SB and then I want you to go CMP AL 0 and then I want you to go JE dot done okay and then if done is called then we will actually um, <coughs> return here okay so then I want you to make a new label above here and just call it um, dot underscore loop well I guess you don't need the underscore just do yeah I guess you do actually do, do an underscore here dot underscore loop and then we're gonna say under je dot done we're gonna go j jmp jump dot loop okay so let me explain this then uh, one one print is called we move our message the address of our message I should say the address of our message where the address because when you reference these labels it gets the address right that's what it's doing it's getting the address so this would be um, what about 102 H I think because of our little jump instruction uh, it might be about 103 H I think anyway that that would be the address of message right so we move that into the SI register okay we move uh, 0 e h into a h again which remember is our print print character routine and then we go into loop here lod sb basically loads the first character from message and then increments the si by here okay so what 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 that does is it'll load the first, it'll load the byte from it'll load the byte from from the message which is h It'll increment SI so on the next time it comes around it's pointing at E. Does that make sense? Okay. So lot SB it loads it into the AL register. I should have said that. So uh, it'll read the character and load it into the AL register, which is one byte in size. So then we say uh, compare the AL register to zero. If it is zero, we're done. So then we JE means jump equal. So if AO is zero jump to done we're done let's leave and then here we jump back to our loop to carry it on so all I want you to do here then I want you to say uh, this by here copy this okay we can get rid of our print char now by the way we won't need that um, anymore just paste that in there and uh, get rid of these two and that is it that should work fine so rather than do um, rather than do this th the way I've done this right you would go call print but obviously print print itself specifies the message so what, what we'll do instead if we take this out of here and we put that there instead okay so what we're now saying is is um, uh, move move a message to the SI register and then then when we call print then it will it will then add move uh, 0 h into the AH register and 0 h by the way is I don't know if I've said this already it's the command to the BIOS so when we call um, when we call like interrupt um, 10 h is for video routines and stuff right so 0 h is the function number that uh, the BIOS will look for w w when we call interrupt 10H. 
and in this case Zuri H, Zuri H means to just print a, one character to the screen. Anyway, let, let's run that now by pressing emulate and we press run and you can see hello world output it nice and easy. Okay, so that's what it looks like. So make sure you get that exactly right. Okay, so I understand that you're probably very confused because this is not like high level programming and when I first started assembly I I used to think these were variables like doing things like this as I've said already but the most important thing about learning assembly is first understanding this one crucial point and that is the code runs down right it doesn't care if you have data in the way it'll run it it'll run it unless you're unless you're compiling in, uh, with sections and stuff but doing it like this that's how it works so without this jump main the the processor will come in and it will try to execute h as an instruction and then it'll try to execute e as an instruction all right by putting the jump there uh, this will jump to main down here skipping over our data skipping over our print function because it's all in order by the way all of it is in order and then when we call main here then we can just move the message to the SI register the address of the message not the message itself the address in memory which is like 103h I think based on the look of this and then we call print it'll jump up here it'll output our message when it's done we call rect which puts us on line 25 here because we return back back to the caller of, of the, our subroutine right and then finally we call rec which passes control back to ms dos which ends our program because i i know i know you're probably really confused probably makes no sense at all but don't worry this is the hello world right when you understand this you'll be able to do anything so in the following lectures we're going to discuss a lot of these individual components are uh, in depth and I'll be using the hello world um, as a reference to try and explain that how it applies to this hello world program as we go along so by the end of the course you'll definitely understand this hello world program and you'll probably be able to do a lot more with assembly um, you'll understand how it all works internally okay so thanks for watching Thank you for watching this part of the course. You can find the next part in the video description.